Dear Elders, There is an ancient saying, haste makes waste. In the golden years of our lives, the more calm and unhurried we are, the more we embrace life's true essence. While our pace may slow with age, it often brings forth sweet rewards. In contrast, rushing through decisions, eager for quick results, more often than not leads to failure. The faster you push something, the more likely it is to crumble. As we reflect on this, I invite you to listen to these stories that echo this timeless wisdom. 1. The First Story Rushing Into a New Marriage H was deeply concerned about his father, Mr. D, especially after hearing that he needed stomach surgery. Despite being overseas, H rushed back to see his father, overcoming many obstacles to get home. He couldn't help but think, if only my father hadn't rushed into remarrying, maybe he wouldn't have suffered so much. H was the eldest son, and as he arrived home, his heart sank. Mr. D greeted him with a smile, despite having lost most of his teeth, making it hard for him to eat. As they spoke, Mr. D humorously mentioned, you used to love this dish when you were a child, but now with most of my stomach gone, I can't eat much anymore. He tried to laugh along, but inside he felt a deep sadness. His father hadn't even gotten proper dentures, which would have made eating easier and his appearance more pleasant. H couldn't shake the sorrow he felt for his father. Looking around the house, H noticed the absence of his father's new wife, Mrs. T, and their daughter, L. His father explained, she's staying with her family and Lel is renting near her university. She hardly comes home, except for brief visits on Sundays. Confused, H asked, why is L renting a place? The school isn't that far from here. Mr. D sighed and replied, she doesn't want to stay here with me. Her friends tease her, saying I look more like her grandfather. The weight of loneliness in his father's voice hard, H hard. He offered to cook something for his father, but Mr. D could only eat thin rice porridge due to his surgery. The doctors had removed two thirds of his stomach and he now had to eat small, simple meals. As H prepared the meal, he asked if Mrs. T or L would be joining them for dinner. His father's response was calm, but painful no one will be back for dinner. Just cook for the two of us. We'll enjoy it together. As his father spoke with such indifference, H could feel an unspoken sadness lurking beneath the surface, a sorrow his father had grown accustomed to hiding. Not wanting to make his father feel worse, H shared stories about his life in Germany. His father listened for a while before drifting off to sleep, his breathing labored and heavy. Later, as H cleaned up, he noticed how neglected the house had become. Mold and dust covered everything. The upstairs rooms were abandoned, coated in dust, evidence that Miss S, T, and L hadn't been taking care of his father or the home. They had clearly left Mr. D behind a long time ago. Yet, despite this, his father had never complained. He likely didn't want to burden H, knowing he lived far away and had his own family to care for. Whenever H called to check in, his father always said, everything's fine. Everyone's doing well. A few months ago, Mr. D had even asked H to buy L a pair of sneakers from Germany because she had complained about the local shoes her father had bought her. When H arrived with the shoes, L didn't even come home to see her brother. Instead, she stayed at her rented place with friends. It hurt H to see how little she cared for their father. Yet, he couldn't help but remember that his own daughter, though just 18, had sent so many gifts from Germany for her grandfather, even gifts for Mrs. T and L, but here, upon his return, the house was empty, devoid of warmth or welcome, save for his father's anticipation of his visit. It seemed that only Mr. D cared about his son's homecoming, and now Mr. D was the one left to care for himself. Twenty years ago, things had been different. When H's mother passed away, his father was just over 60. After a few years, friends introduced Mr. D to Miss T, who was almost 40 and unmarried. At that time, Mr. D still had an old girlfriend, a widow he had loved since they were young but couldn't marry due to circumstances. H had hoped they would reconnect in their later years as they shared a deep bond. She was well-educated and would have brought joy to Mr. D's life. However, she wasn't interested in remarrying content with her grandchildren and her life as it was. Feeling the loneliness creeping in, Mr. D decided to marry Mrs. T, who seemed like a good match, especially since she didn't have children from a previous marriage. He believed she would care for him, and together they would build a life. Not long after, Mrs. T expressed her desire to have children, despite her age. Mr. D poured all his savings into fertility treatments, traveling far and wide to consult doctors and specialists. After years of effort, Mrs. T gave birth to L, and everyone celebrated. It seemed like the child would solidify the couple's happiness. But as soon as L was born, Mrs. T's focus shifted entirely to her daughter. She no longer cared for Mr. D or their relationship. Mr. D had been a good provider. He had a pension, savings, and even property. But now, 
his role was reduced to that of a wallet. Mrs. T left him to fend for himself, rarely lifting a finger to help around the house. Over the years, Mr. D managed everything, from cooking to cleaning, without complaint. He still had his health, so he carried on without protest, hoping things would improve. Yet, as time passed, the strain became too much. Miss T and L grew more distant, spending his money on flashy clothes and gadgets while neglecting him. Mr. D had even purchased a life insurance policy for L when she was born, investing thousands of dollars every year to ensure she would have a secure future. But when she turned 17, she demanded a new iPhone, pressuring her father to borrow money against the insurance policy to buy it. Her mother, instead of discouraging this, only added to the demand. Mr. D, weary and heartbroken, gave in. Be careful with that phone, he warned her. It's expensive, and it could be dangerous to use it out in public. But soon after, L demanded a new car, and Mr. D felt utterly exhausted, crushed under the weight of their endless expectations. Looking back on his life, Mr. D confided in H. If only I hadn't rushed into remarriage, maybe I wouldn't have brought this pain upon myself or upon you. Dear elders, love knows no age. Everyone says this, but few truly understand the depth of this truth. In old age, when life should be peaceful and less burdened by responsibilities, the pain of loneliness can drive people to seek companionship quickly. When a spouse passes away and children are busy with their own lives, the elderly may feel compelled to find a new partner. But rushing into a new marriage without careful consideration can lead not to the warmth and comfort one seeks, but to deeper loneliness, even rejection, as Mr. D's story illustrates. In the final chapter of life, it's important not to make decisions in haste. Sometimes the search for companionship can end in a bittersweet story like Mr. D's, where instead of finding joy, he found himself alone, even more isolated than before. Let us remember that life's greatest blessings often come when we approach it with patience, wisdom, and a heart open to deeper understanding, rather than quick solutions. 2. The second story rushing to divide the inheritance. Mrs. T and her husband had been together for over 30 years, living a modest but stable life in their hometown. They had three children, two sons, and one daughter. In their younger days, Mrs. T worked as an accountant while her husband worked at a factory until his early retirement due to health issues. After retirement, they opened a small shop selling electrical goods. Over the course of a decade, their hard work paid off. They were able to save some money, purchase a house on the main road, which also served as their store, and inherit a 200-square-meter plot of land from her husband's family where they built a two-story house for their family of five. Among their children, only the youngest son, Kay, moved to the city for work and was paying off a small apartment. The eldest son, who worked as a driver, continued living with Mrs. T in the family home. Their daughter, who didn't have a job, stayed at home caring for her own family and had been given a small, one-story house near Mrs. T's by her in-laws. Three years ago, Mrs. T's husband fell ill and passed away, leaving her alone. With her health in decline, she decided to stop running the shop. The pension and interest from her $10,000 savings were enough to cover her daily expenses and occasionally help her children and grandchildren. Now retired, Mrs. T had more time to think about the future. She worried about her children's struggles with housing and work. At times, she considered withdrawing some of her savings to help them, but she remembered her late husband's words, warning her never to touch that money. He had told her, no matter what happens, you must keep some money for yourself for emergencies, for when you're sick, or for your final arrangements. Looking around at her properties, a shop on the main road, and a 200-square-meter plot of land, Mrs. T decided to divide her assets among her children to help them live better lives. She thought it over and chose to split the land between her two sons. As for her daughter, she proposed a house swap she would move into her daughter's one-story house, and her daughter's family would move into the larger, more valuable house on the main road. The swap would give her daughter the opportunity to run a small business and become financially independent, as her daughter's house was worth about $15,000 less than the main road property. Feeling she had come up with a fair solution, Mrs. T immediately informed her children of the plan. They seemed agreeable to the arrangement, and the legal paperwork took some time to complete, but Mrs. T was content. She felt she had provided for her children, ensuring they all had something to build on for their future. Once everything was settled, Mrs. T used $5,000 of her savings to renovate her new home. She preferred to live alone, especially since she didn't get along well with her eldest daughter-in-law. With her daughter's house nearby, it seemed easy to maintain close ties and support each other when needed. Mrs. T thought she had arranged everything perfectly until her youngest son, Kay, 
decided to sell the land she had given him. He used the money to pay off his mortgage in the city. When her daughter found out, she was upset. Both my brothers got land, but I didn't get anything from you, Mom. I'm the one who's been taking care of you. How come I'm the one who has to suffer just because I'm a daughter? Her daughter complained. Mrs. T was stunned. She had believed that swapping the houses would benefit her daughter, providing her with a better source of income and greater independence in her in-law's household. Mrs. T didn't need gratitude. She only wanted her daughter to be happy. But now her daughter's words cut deep. As Mrs. T struggled with her daughter's complaints, she also overheard her eldest daughter-in-law one day, when mom passes away, will be the ones responsible for taking care of her. She should have given us more not divided everything equally among everyone. Mrs. T felt a pang of sorrow at these words. She had already divided her assets. There was nothing she could do to change the situation now. Occasionally, she would hear similar stories from her friends, who also faced family disputes over property division. Mrs. T consoled herself, thinking at least her family wasn't fighting or arguing publicly. But still, the harsh comments from her children weighed heavily on her mind. Many nights she lay awake, haunted by their words, regretting her decision to divide her assets so soon. Sometimes she wished she had listened to her late husband's advice to keep more for herself, to ensure she had enough for her old age. Now, with most of her assets given away, she worried about what her future would hold. Would her children care for her? Or would they argue over who would take responsibility? Miss T couldn't help but feel lost and uncertain about what lay ahead. Her story serves as a poignant reminder for all of us rushing to divide your assets can leave you vulnerable, dependent, and without security in your old age. It's essential to plan carefully for retirement, keeping a portion of your assets or savings reserved for your own well-being. Only then can you ensure that your later years will be peaceful and comfortable, free from the burden of uncertainty and regret. 3. The third story rushing to judge others. There is a story that goes like this. A doctor, after receiving an emergency call, rushed as fast as he could to the hospital and quickly changed into his surgical attire. The husband of the female patient, unable to contain his anger, snapped. How can you be late like this? Don't you know my wife is in critical condition? You are completely irresponsible. The doctor, with a calm smile, replied, I'm so sorry. I wasn't at the hospital when I got the call, but I came as quickly as I could. Please stay calm. The man angrily retorted, Calm? If it were your loved one in surgery, would you be calm? What if your wife dies? How would you feel? Hours later, the surgery was a success. The doctor emerged from the operating room and cheerfully told the husband, thank God your wife is safe. Without waiting for a reply, the doctor hurried away, saying, if you have any questions, you can ask the nurse. Still furious, the husband complained to the nurse, that doctor is so arrogant. I didn't even get a few minutes to ask about my wife's condition. Tears welled up in the nurse's eyes as she explained, the doctor's son died in a car accident yesterday. When we called him in for your wife's surgery, he was on his way to the funeral home. Now that your wife is saved, he has to hurry back to bury his son. Dear elders, life often presents us with challenges we cannot see or fully understand. The struggles others face are often hidden beneath the surface. From our limited perspective, we may judge someone based on what little we know, but we cannot see the burdens they carry or the battles they fight. Every individual has their own unique worries, struggles, and ways of dealing with life's trials. The person you meet today may not act as you expect, and their actions may upset or confuse you. But instead of rushing to judge them, remember that they too are dealing with their own struggles, just as we all do. At the end of the day, haste is the source of many missteps and mistakes. As we age, with the wisdom and experiences we've gained, we come to realize that nothing in life should be rushed. In our golden years, it's vital to learn how to stay calm, to face challenges with a peaceful heart, and to approach every situation with a sense of tranquility. A peaceful mind brings clarity, and with that clarity comes deeper understanding and lasting blessings. In conclusion, life in its complexity demands patience. Whether it's in relationships, major decisions, or our judgments of others, moving too fast often leads to regret. Let us cherish the wisdom of patience as it helps us navigate the later stages of life with grace, understanding, and peace. The more tranquil our hearts and minds become, the deeper our understanding, and the more richly we can experience the true blessings life has to offer. If you find these stories inspiring and they motivate you to take action, please comment 9. If not, comment 0. Your feedback means a lot to us. Thank you for your valuable time. Part 2 if you are 70 to 80 years old, remember these four things to avoid being resented by your children. As we journey into the later stages of life, 
Many of us find ourselves reflecting on the path we've walked and the legacy we hope to leave behind. But how do we ensure that our golden years are filled with dignity, independence, and joy? What lessons can we learn from those who have walked this road before us? In this inspiring exploration, we delve into the wisdom of four essential principles that guide us toward a fulfilling and secure full on. Discover how balancing love for our children with self-care and independence can create a legacy of strength and resilience that resonates across generations. Join us as we uncover the keys to living well and embracing life's beauty at every age. Principle one, have sufficient savings. In a small town, there lived an elderly couple who had dedicated their entire lives to raising their four children. Despite their modest means, they poured their hearts and resources into providing the best for their kids, believing that their sacrifices would be repaid with love and care in their golden years. They spent every penny on weddings and houses, nurturing dreams of a happy, supported old age. Yet, when illness struck, the reality was heart-wrenching. Their daughters rarely visited, and their sons were reluctant to contribute financially to their care. It was their neighbors, not their children, who rallied together, raising funds for the couple's medical needs. This story serves as a poignant reminder for parents everywhere love your children, but remember to love yourselves too. While it's natural to invest in your children's futures, it's crucial to plan for your own. Encourage your children to be independent and resilient. As you guide them, don't lose sight of your own well-being. As we journey through life, there's a poignant truth we must embrace each generation has its own blessings. As loving parents, we naturally wish to shield our children from hardship, offering them a comfortable life. We labor tirelessly, save diligently, and sometimes sacrifice our dreams, all to ensure our children have a better start in life. We help them buy homes, start businesses, and pursue their aspirations. This devotion is a testament to the boundless love we hold in our hearts. However, it is crucial to recognize when to step back. Our children are meant to grow into independent adults, capable of standing on their own. By giving everything we have, we risk our own security in our later years. Imagine reaching old age, only to find yourself financially dependent on your children, who may or may not be able to support you. Such a situation can lead to heartache and a sense of helplessness. Let us instead teach our children the values of responsibility and independence. Encourage them to forge their own paths while ensuring we have enough for our future needs. This balance allows us to enjoy our golden years with dignity and peace of mind, knowing we've equipped our children with the tools to thrive on their own. Remember, true love empowers and prepares our children to navigate life confidently. Principle two, have a stable residence. In the quiet corners of life, where dreams meet reality, lies the story of Mr. and Mrs. Chun. For years, they devoted themselves to their bakery, sacrificing and saving to provide their son with a promising future. They believed their efforts would ensure a comfortable old age, living with their beloved child in the house they had gifted him. Yet, when the time came, their hopes were shattered. Upon arriving at their son's doorstep, they were met with the harsh truth the home they had envisioned for their golden years was now occupied by in-laws, and they were left standing outside, heartbroken and homeless. Similarly, an elderly aunt from my hometown found herself in a similar predicament. She sold her cherished home to support her children, only to discover neither son nor daughter had room for her in their lives. The reality of being turned away by one's own flesh and blood is a bitter pill to swallow. These stories highlight a stark truth that many elderly parents face the unconditional love and sacrifices made for children may not always be reciprocated. As parents, the instinct to nurture is natural, yet it's crucial to acknowledge that children's actions are guided by their character and choices. In our twilight years, having a space to call our own, however humble, is the key to peace and happiness. Let us cherish the independence and security that come from creating a sanctuary for ourselves. In doing so, we embrace the greatest gift of all a place to belong, where love resides, and where we find solace and dignity in our journey through life. Principle three, maintain good health. As we age, prioritizing our health becomes a gift not only to ourselves, but also to our loved ones. Imagine living each day with vitality, free from the burdens that ill health can bring. When we neglect our well-being, the impact ripples through our family, creating waves of stress and financial strain. Nana's story is a powerful reminder of this reality. Pregnant and working, she faced the enormous challenge of supporting her ill mother-in-law which placed a heavy burden on her shoulders. With limited savings and mounting expenses, she felt overwhelmed, wishing her troubles were just a bad dream. Her struggle highlights how critical it is for us, as elders, to take charge of our health. By nourishing our bodies, staying active, and ensuring proper rest, we empower ourselves to live with dignity and independence. This self-care not only enriches our lives, but also lifts a weight off our children's shoulders, shoulders, 
allowing them to thrive without the added worry of our well-being. Let us embrace the wisdom that good health is our greatest treasure in later years. In doing so, we pave the way for a joyful, fulfilling life, leaving a legacy of strength and resilience for our families to admire and follow. Principle 4. Live your own life well. As we journey through the later stages of life, the wisdom we have accumulated becomes our greatest asset. While it's natural to lean on loved ones, occasionally striving for independence in our golden years can be profoundly rewarding. Embracing self-sufficiency empowers us, ensuring we live our lives with dignity and grace. Consider the story of Swang from the TV series All Is Well. After the passing of his wife, he relied heavily on his children, expecting them to meet his every demand. This not only disrupted their lives, but also strained their relationships. While Swang's story had a reconciliatory end, Real life often doesn't mirror such endings. The greatest gift we can offer our children is our independence, freeing them to live their own lives without unnecessary burdens. Living with a positive mindset transforms our experiences. By handling our affairs and nurturing our passions, we set an example of resilience and strength. We become a source of inspiration, not just to our children, but to everyone around us. This is not to say we shouldn't seek help when needed reaching out is a strength in itself. However, Maintaining a healthy balance between asking for support and standing on our own can make life more fulfilling. In our later years, let us strive to live fully and joyfully. By doing so, we create a legacy of love, strength, and independence. This legacy will resonate through generations, teaching them the true essence of living well and living free. Let us cherish every moment, enrich the lives of those around us, and embrace the beauty of self-reliance. If you find these stories inspiring and they motivate you to take action, please comment nine. If not, comment zero. Your feedback means a lot to us. Thank you for your valuable time.